ಅವತಾರ ವರಿಷ್ಠಾ ರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯ ನಮಃ ರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯ ನಮಃ sixth chapter dealt with that capacity to see the same divine self in all beings that samata drishti was declared as the fruit of this inward meditation the gita's yoga is uh, you uh, is connected with daily life and work but meditation yoga has something to contribute to this yoga of the gita it is integral yoga all aspects of spiritual life are combined together so one chapter is devoted to this great subject of meditation we studied the whole of those verses dealing with the subject and now the last four verses verses 29 to 32 refer to this great achievement of samata drishti samabhava as a result of that meditation this achievement can be had through bhakti also through jnana also as through this jnana path especially developed by patanjali in his yoga sutras so we should keep in mind that this achievement can be had through all these paths and in the fifth chapter we have already seen the spirit of equality samata bhava coming from jnana from the seventh chapter we will get the same achievement through bhakti in several chapters so the ideal is this to see the same atman in every being and feel one's oneness to move this concept of separateness out of which comes evil violence hatred everything comes from that sense of separateness so this non separateness this samata bhava we have to achieve for which we have to go beyond the sensory level at the sensory level everything is different it's only when you go beyond the sensory level you find that supreme unity pure consciousness one and non dual behind everything in this universe and so going beyond the sensory level is necessary in every path bhakti jnana karma only difference is in this jnana path or meditation path or jnana spiritual knowledge the path is rather difficult but in the bhakti path the same thing is achieved more easily we don't do much violence to our own 
sensory nature, we go with it and slowly transcend it. That will be told later on in the twelfth chapter, chapter on Bhakti by Sri Krishna. But we should keep in mind this. The goal is this, but the goal can be attained through all these various paths. But in the Gita, all these paths are blended together into one supreme spiritual path, what I call a comprehensive spirituality of action and contemplation blended together. That is the philosophy for this modern age, that God can be seen not only with eyes closed in meditation, but also with eyes open at the time of work. This is a profound idea in Advaita. And in this modern period, Sri Ramakrishna has specially stressed the importance of this comprehensive spirituality of the Gita based on that Advaitic vision. Meditation is a difficult art. Anybody who has tried it will admit that it is not easy. Years and years you go on meditating, true meditation will not come so soon. The mind has been accustomed in a particular way, you cannot change it so easily. And so, if by concentration and meditation you have to get this sameness of vision, samatva, bhava, then it is far away. There is no hope for us. This doubt is being voiced by Arjuna in verse 33 and 34, which we take up for study this evening. Arjuna said, Yoyam Yoga Svaya Prokthaha Samyena Madhusodana Etasyaham Napashyami Chanchadatvat Sthitim Sthiram you spoke of that wonderful vision of equality, samadarshitva, samatva, as a result of this yoga. I find it extremely difficult because the mind is very fickle. That stability, that steadiness, we do not get to have this wonderful vision. Yoyam yoga svaya proktaha. The yoga which you expect expounded just now, Jnana Yoga. I am not able to understand how we can achieve that Samatva through this Yoga because Chanchalatva, the mind is very, very fickle. We cannot concentrate it easily. That stability, that steadiness, we cannot get. Then the next verse is Stands it further. Chanchalam hi manak krishna pramati balavad dritham tasyaham nikraham manye vayoriva sudushkaram. Arjuna is putting forth the doubt which every one of us has. He says, Verily, Krishna, the mind is very, very fickle. Chanchalam hi, he in Sanskrit means it is well known. Wherever you find the word he, it is well known that mind is very, very fickle. Chanchalamiti Manak Krishna. Pramati Balavad Dhritam. It pulls you this way, that way. You cannot pull it, it will pull you. That is the nature of this mind. Kasyaham Nigraham Manye. Its control and discipline I consider as difficult as catching air in your hands. Why over you? Sudushkaram. Catch all of your air in your hand, you find no way, nothing there. Here is not possible to be caught like this. So two verses conveying the problem of dealing with the mind. And it is good for us to know that it is not easy. It is hard. We cannot finish everything in six months and get away. 
and so Arjuna puts the question on our behalf and Krishna gives the answer taking the subject to a wider dimension. Krishna says therefore Bhagavan Uvacha, Bhagavan says you are right Arjuna this mind is very difficult to control. Krishna accepts this description of the mind by Arjuna. He doesn't contradict it at all. There is Sri Bhagavan Vacha. This how we can manage. Asamchayam Mahabahu Mano Durnigraham Chalam. You are right. Without any doubt, Asamchayam. Mano Durnigraham. Mind is difficult to control. Discipline. Chalam. It is constantly flickering, moving all the time. Mano Durnigraham Chalam. Tasyaham Nigraham Manye. He said, Abhyasayana Kaunteya. Then Arjuna said, I find it difficult to control. Krishna gives the answer. It can be controlled. I accept the present state of the mind is very difficult and difficult to control. But can be controlled. How? By two methods. Abhyasena ta kaunteya. Vairagyena ta grikyate. Abhyasa vairagya. Constant practice. That is one wonderful truth in all life, not only in spiritual life. Things which are impossible become possible when you do repeatedly the same thing to get mastery over that thing. When you see somebody playing tabla, oh, it is impossible. But after six months, you also get it, that capacity there. When I was a boy, when I saw people going on a cycle, how difficult is going on a cycle like this? But when you do it for a few days, you also do it. So it is a question of practice. Abhyasa means practice. That's a very important word. And the next is vairagya, a sense of detachment. Why the mind runs about? Because there are so many things to attract the mind. We shall develop a little detachment. That will help to deal with the mind better. So Abhyasa Vairagya and the same idea is expressed by Patanjali dealing with the same subject about controlling the mind. Abhyasa Vairagya Abhyam Tan Nirodha The Chitta Vritti constantly moving about. This, cannot, this can be controlled by Abhyasa and Vairagya. This confidence we must have. A thing is impossible when you say, then you will not be able to do that at all. You must have the conviction that it is possible. It is possible. What is impossible? Going to the moon was impossible, but it is possible today. So there are many things which we think impossible at one time will become possible at another time. Therefore, don't say it is impossible. We shall do it. We shall do it. A tremendous determination must be there. This is expressed in Mandukya Karika of Gaudapada in a famous verse that dealing with the mind, you must have a tremendous determination. What is the type of determination? Taking a piece of grass, with that grass, you try to empty the ocean, drop by drop. With that determination, you must do this. Utsayaka udhathir yadvat kushagre naika binduna manso nikrahas tadvat bhavet aparikhe tadaha Without depression, we must consistently pursue this work of dealing with the mind. Just like a bird decided to empty the ocean because it had destroyed its eggs which it had laid nearby. The bird came and took a piece of grass and started emptying the ocean drop by drop. A sage saw it. It's wonderful. This is what we need in our daily life. 
that determination, I shall, I shall do it. Mount Everest climbing was difficult. Today everybody does it. Women also do it. So I'm telling that there is capacity in the human mind for achieving control of the mind and achieving the truth of the Atman. We must have the faith in that power of the mind. That enormous possibilities are there hidden in, in every one of us. A child finds a thing difficult, but a young man of 20 will find it easy. In this way you can see that our judgment regarding possibility and impossibility of things is very relative. So don't go to an extreme assertion, oh it is impossible. Okay. You can say at present it is impossible, but I shall do it, I shall do it. That should be the attitude when I refer to the circus lion last time when I refer a tiger or a lion. First day, a man goes to tame it. It is impossible to approach it even. Such a terrible look and grunting and rolling and you get frightened. But you work it. You be at it. Slowly, 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 and you tame that terrible animal. You can just sit on his back. That's what we do with regard to the wild animals around us. The wild mind is also the same. It can be tamed. It can be made a servant of your purposes. Therefore, that faith must be there. I shall, I shall. Let it take any number of years, even lives. But we shall do it. We shall do it. Our concept of time is not confined merely to one physical existence. It is much wider, much vaster. What I fail to achieve now, I shall achieve it later. But I shall continue to struggle. And I shall achieve something and leave it for the next incarnation to achieve the remaining. This vast canvas of time he is given to man because he has got many things to achieve and he has got many possible energies hidden within him and therefore the scale of time which is given to us in Vedanta is so different from what is given to man in every other religion. Therefore Krishna will later on say about this wonderful time scale available to us in achieving things. Let us be at it. Therefore, Krishna said, Adhyasayata kaunteya vairagyanata jashyate It can be done. It can be controlled through Adhyasa and Vairagya. Adhyasa is a wonderful idea. You have seen a piece of rock there. A drop of water falling from the roof on that rock. Drip by drip falling. After some years you will find that rock has become eroded by that simple little water that will appear. I have seen a rock where a man used to make the sashtanga mascara, forehead touching that rock. Some years I watched and that rock has become just like this. That is the nature of that. That is very, very tender thing of the skin or the tender drop of water can break through this hard rock. What a wonderful idea. So this mind can do, can penetrate. Though it looks very flimsy just now. We shall have to make it strong, steady. That is the work we have to do with training the mind. This is the teaching that is given by all the great Master who we have produced in this country. <laughs> Defeatism has less place also. Defeatism is not correct. You may de get defeated once, but it will apply. Again, you will be defeated by British in the Second World War. Britain loses many battles, but she wins the war. That's the language. Many battles she has lost, but the war she wins finally. So in daily life it is the same. Many battles we shall lose dealing with the mind. 
But eventually, the war will be won. That should be our attitude with regard to dealing with our mind. It is extremely difficult. In fact, this is in the yoga, jnana yoga context. In bhakti yoga context also the same idea comes that we find our minds very difficult. Oh Lord, the control, please do something. Devotee prays. Now, there is one sloka and that is a prayer on behalf of the devotees of the world. Because they know their minds are very weak and the prayer is composed by an extraordinary person on behalf of you and I, that is Shankaracharya. He has dealt with the subject in his Jivananda Lahari, the famous book. The shloka says here, second part of the shloka, Kapalin Tikshome Hrutaya Gapi Matyanta Chapadam Trinham Bhaktiya Badhva Shiva Bhavadathinam Kuru Vipho. Very beautiful sentence. Go Kapalin, Shiva is called a Kapalin because he takes the skull from a cremation ground using it as a vessel for eating food. That's called begging. Kapali. Kapali. Bhikshu. He is a beggar. So he is called a Bhikshu. Me. Hridaya Kapim. The monkey of my heart. Atyanda Chakadam. Extremely fickle is this monkey. It never sits quiet. His eyes are always moving. But you can see the nature of the monkey. So Atyanda Chakadam. What? Should Shiva do to you? Trudham Bhaktiya Bhadhva. Find him strongly, the God of Bhakti. Even then, don't leave him here and there. Bhava Dathinam Kuru Vibho. Keep him at your own feet. Then there will be no fear. This mind of mine, tie him with the God of Bhakti. Don't leave him here and there. He may escape. Put him at your own feet. Then there is no fear for me. That is the prayer of Shankara on our behalf. A bhakta praying to the divine. Kapalin Hittome Hridaya Kapim Atyanta Chapalam Dridham Bhaktya Badhva Shiva Avadathiram Kuri Vibho. So in devotion also the same problem comes why the mind is not settling at the feet of God. We are running about all the time. And so this is a constant problem in spiritual life as well as in all types of higher life where character development is the central theme. To develop character, we need a measure of control of the human mind. Whatever the mind does, you do. There is no character out of that. You have to direct the mind in a particular direction. You have kept a goal in front of you. The mind must be trained to go in that direction then you find difficulty. So it is a problem for everyone who wants to live more than the usual animal life, where every impulse is given free expression. But if you want to go higher, you have to check these impulses, control them, direct them into higher channels. All that means hard struggle. That is not so easy. And then higher spiritual developments it becomes still more difficult through bhakti, jnana, as well as through this yoga of the Gita. So Krishna is telling that have this positive attitude. I shall overcome. I shall overcome. How many difficult situations we have overcome? How many problems we have overcome? This also we shall overcome. That should be the faith that must inspire our heart. Shraddha, Shraddha, Atma Shraddha, faith in yourself, faith also in the divine that is within yourself. What is impossible when that divine awakens in me? That should be our attitude. This is called Shraddha, a totality of positive attitudes. Negative attitudes should not be cultivated. 
for long periods. Short period may be. General attitude must be, I shall, I shall, I can, I can. That's called Shraddha. And we saw in the previous chapter, a person is as good as the Shraddha that he has within himself. Shraddha mayavayam purushu. Whatever Shraddha you have, that is your identity. If you don't have Shraddha, you will be absolutely a good for nothing individual. Have that Shraddha, have that faith in yourself that tremendous energies are hidden within me. So he said, Abhyasa Vairagya. I have seen a boy in Rangoon, very weak, and various evil habits of smoking, etc. Barrister's son. So one day barrister came to me, this is the nature of the boy, he likes you, please give some suggestion. I said, send him from Rangoon to Bangalore. Professor K. V. Ayer, Hercules Gymnasium, let him go and develop his body. His body has become very thin and weak. The mind also is weak, therefore, send him there. And that is a miracle. By the time the boy landed in Vaisal from Rangoon, he gave up smoking himself without anybody telling him. Then he went to Bangalore, developed his body. Big change came. He became later on a chartered accountant or somebody like that. Like that. So I'm telling how, by a little effort, new strength can come to us. We must be at it. That's why Krishna is emphasizing this point. Abhyasa, Abhyasa. How many things we achieve through Abhyasa. People learning music. What difficult thing it is to play on a harmonium or a veena or any such instrument. But they all achieve it. So what is impossible at one moment becomes possible at another moment. That is how the mind must be told. And the mind gives you a negative response. Give these ideas. Make it positive. Accept the positive idea to tell the mind. Then set about your task. Even then it won't be easy. But you won't become depressed because you are not achieving. Time is there. Let me continue, etc. So Krishna says, Without that effort, asamyatatmano yogo, dushtvapa itime matihi, he says. Those who have no control of the mind, there is no possibility of yoga for that person. Asamyatatmano. Samyata means discipline or control. Asamyata, without that control. Mind is wandering here and there. How can we get any kind of yoga? That's my opinion, Krishna says here. Vashyatmanatu yatata chakyo avaptum upayataha. But those who have some measure of control over the mind, some measure, may not be all, that person or such persons can achieve real yoga by adopting proper means. Vashyo, he says, avaptum upayataha. Proper upaya. If you are employed, you will achieve finally a complete control of the mind and the samatva that ensues from that state of mind. So, samyata, asamyata. Asamyata means without samyama or control. And samyata means well controlled, well disciplined. Proper methods are to be adopted and you will achieve the result. Then, Arjuna again asking a question. Arjuna Uvacha. Ayati, Tathayo Peto, Yoga Charita Manasaha, Aprapya Yoga Samsidhim, Kaan Dadhim Krishna Gachati. A person who was struggling, later on he became a little uh, uh, amiss in his struggle weakening his endeavor, then he loses his yoga state. Ayate, Shraddha Yopeto. But he has great Shraddha. I must do all this. I have faith in myself. That Shraddha is there. Shraddha in yoga technique also he is there. He is there. But the mind has fallen down to the state of yoga. Yoga, Charita Manasa. A little bit of 
carelessness came, carelessness came, from the mind, mind has fallen down, from that temper of yoga. Aprapi yoga samsiddhim. We did not achieve the final goal of yoga, the samsiddhi, perfection in yoga. What happens to that person? Kaam gadhim krishna gachyati. A person is in this condition, he is on the deathbed, he is to die. What will be his state? He is saying this, and the next yoga explains it further. Kachinno ubhaya vibhrasta. Vibhrasta. Chinna abhramiva nashyati. He has lost both worldly life and spiritual life. Ubhaya. Ubhaya means both. Vibhrasta. Fallen down from both. Chinna abhramiva nashyati. Does he get destroyed? Just like a cloud in the sky, a strong wind comes and scatters all over. Is he also of that nature? He has been practicing yoga. He has faith in it. He gave it up. He became amiss. Is he going to be destroyed? Just like that cloud in the sky. Apramatto, Apratishto, Mahabaho, without any established state of yoga, apratishto, mahabaho, vimodho, brahmanapati, becoming deluded in the path of brahman. His mind has fallen down from there. What will happen to such a person who has failed to pursue his yoga path after the end? This is Arjuna's question. This is repeated saying, Edan me samshayam Krishna. This is my doubt O Krishna. Chetu malhasi asheshita. You are capable of destroying this doubt that is in me. Tadanya samshayasya chetana tupapadyate. I do not find anybody else who can remove this doubt except yourself. There is nobody else. Therefore, I am placing my doubt before you. Bhagavan Vaja, Sri Krishna replied. The first thing that he does is to assure every person that if you have done good, you will never be destroyed. That is a great assurance coming from Krishna in the Gita in more than one place here. Pārtha-naivehanāmatra Vinashastasya vidyate nahi kalyana prakrasti durgarim tata gachati. Arjuna, I tell you that neither in this life nor in the future life that person who has struggled for spiritual life has any possibility of being destroyed. But I can assure you Nahi kalyanagrakkashti durgatim tata vachati. Anybody who does good, kalyana means what is good, what is auspicious. It is a beautiful word in Sanskrit. Kalyana, mangala, chubha. All the three mean the same thing. But into Amaragosha, kalyanam, mangalam, chubham. Whoever does what is kalyana, or mangala, or chubha, Lyanakut says, Dava Dukati Nagachati. My dear child, he will never come to grief, never come to any bad situation. Dukati, a bad state of life, that will never come to him. This is a promise. Nahi Kalyanakut Kashit Dukati Tava Gachati. Then what will happen? He explains it. Prapti punya krutan lokan pushitva shashvati samaha tuchinam srimatam gehe yoga prashto abhijayate. The yoga prashta, one who has fallen from the state of yoga without completing the whole thing, mind became diverted, such a person will be born in the next life, in a suitable environment, 
to continue this unfinished task. That is the special teaching of the Sanatana Dharma. In no other religion you will find this idea, especially the world's religions. Earlier primitive religions had this belief. But others have only one life, this particular physical manifestation, nothing else. But in India, all the great teachers of India, Hindu, Buddhist, Jain, all, they have emphasized that this physical manifestation is only one such manifestation. Many have gone behind us, many will come in front of us also. We are in search of something. If you can't get it now, you will get it next. You will get it next. You will get opportunity. This is the concept of rebirth or reincarnation. That knowledge came to us when we discovered that this human being has three personalities. One is the gross personality of the physical body, Pula Sharira, within which there is a subtle personality of our ideas and thoughts and impressions, etc. That is called Sukshma Sharira, the subtle body, within which is the Karna Sharira, the causal body, extremely subtle. So one is gross, the other is subtle, the other is extremely subtle. At the time of death, what happens is, this gross body is shed, it goes away. It has a limited frame of life. Its time frame is different, very limited. Whereas, time frame of the subtle body is much vaster. So, even now, much of our day-to-day -day life is conducted by that subtle body through the physical cross body. This is only a container-like thing. Our conscious experiences are controlled by the unconscious, subconscious levels of the human mind. They constitute the sukshma sharira, containing all the impressions of our life, of actions, etc. When we discover this sukshma sharira, then we got this new idea. Death is not the end of human life. Only this particular manifestation ended there and your march continues. So that death is treated therefore not as a full stop but only a comma or a semicolon but not a full stop. The sentence continues further and further but physically you cannot verify it. It can be verified only spiritually. So the sages who, who could go deep into the human mind could discover this type of existence beyond the physical manifestation. So what is done here is not destroyed. We continue our march later. This is just a sleep and we wake up and continue the march. A pilgrim going to Kedavadri takes a sleep at night a particular place. But next morning continues the pilgrimage again. And human life is like this. This is a profound truth of our religion, which is attracting the attention of increasing numbers of people, even though it cannot be verified. There is no physical verification. This sensory system cannot verify it. No quantity can be made out of it. And yet, the whole idea has some profound truth within it. People feel it. Even an agnostic like Thomas Huxley, collaborator of Darwin, he himself said, our science has no objection against this wonderful truth of rebirth. No objection. Science doesn't support it, doesn't confirm it, but it has nothing to object to it. That's the language he has used, perfectly correct. So also many other scientists, they would like to know the truth of this. After all, he lived and one day quietly died away. Is everything over? Everything over? That suspicion remains all through. 
every human mind has asked this question. Asti tyeke, nayam asti tyeke. As the Patoganishad said, some say everything is over with him, some say there is still something left over. We may not see with these eyes, but it is there. Now, based upon that truth of reincarnation, Krishna says, when that Yoga Prashta dies physically, he has only destroyed the physical body of the Sukhma Sharira. But the man himself, with that Sukhma Sharira, that continues and tries to get a new birth. And his whole tendency in this life will determine the type of birth he will have. In this case, what kind of birth? Two types of birth as a sample Krishna has given here. What is that? Vāpya Kūnyakṛtāṁ Lokāṁ First of all, he has done much good work here, some Kūnyam he has done here. So he will go to heavenly worlds. Kūnyakṛtāṁ Lokāṁ But that is not eternal. When the capital which took you there is exhausted, he comes back to the human world. Yes, we born. Where? Tuchinam Srimatam Gehe. In a prosperous family, but a pure family, such a person will get a birthday. He will be gravitating to that particular situation. After all, there is such a thing as a affinity. This soul has affinity with that situation. Therefore, he finds it possible to be born there. So he said, Tashuti Sama, having lived long in that heavenly enjoyment, when the capital is exhausted, Punyam capital is exhausted, he may be born in a Tuchi Dam Srimatam Gehe, Yoga Prashto Abhijayate. He is born there. And what happens when he is born there? Within a short time, the entire samskara of the past comes to help him. He starts his journey once again, where he left off. Nothing is lost, what he have done. And so, he will say that, Tatratam buddhisam yogam lepade parvadehikam There, he becomes associated with the entire gamut of thoughts and aspirations that he had in the past life and the fall that he had, his neglect, and all this comes to him through various impulses from within. Then he says, now let me begin once again, continue. He may not remember all that he did in the past, but the subconscious mind takes him in that direction. Just like in our life today, what makes us choose a particular profession? Everybody, same family, the same genetic constitution, but each child of the family chooses a particular profession, music, sports, science, or mountaineering, according to one's interest. Where is this interest from? Not in this life. In this life there has been nothing. So this impulse coming from the past. I don't know what it is, but it is impelling me. I must go for this. I must go for this. You argue with that person, that boy or girl. No, don't do it. Go for something else, something else. You may try it, but no, you will come back to this. This is my choice. This is my choice. This determination in the new life is based on what all we did in the past life. It gives you a particular impulse, a particular direction. So, Tatratam Buddhivam Yog, Adhava. First birth is in a Sujinam Srimatam Gehe. The second birth is in a yogi's own house. That is the Sloga 42. Adhava Yoginam Eva. It says, Kule Bhavati Dhimatam. A very wise yogi's family may not be economically well-to-do, but they are fine, nice people. They are also practicing yoga. There you will get a birthday that will stimulate you all the more. You like that. You can see in India today, in 
the number of people applying for central services, particularly IAS, IFS, and IPS. The largest number is from Delhi because the whole atmosphere of the family is there. He is governed by this service, various types of services. So the whole atmosphere has a stimulus to give to the child born there. So in the beginning, Delhi dominated all these intakes into central services. Slowly, slowly, it is now spreading to the interior areas also because everywhere this new samskara is coming. So people from far away places, even small towns, even villages, people are coming to apply for central service. There is such a thing as a, a sort of a, a stimulus being given to you by the atmosphere of the family or society. In the case of yoga, it is just the same. In a holy family, you will have the tendency to pursue what you left off earlier. You may not know the why of it, but it is something that pulls you in that direction. You cannot say no to it. Nobody else can say no to it. That is the idea. Atava yoginameva kule bhavati dhimatam. Very wise family. A yogin who is very wise. But etadhi durlapataram. This is extremely difficult to get this option. It is not so easy. Etadhi durlapataram. Loke janma yadi drishna. This kind of birth in the world is rather very rare. Not so many. But some cases are there of this nature. So he had already an atmosphere of yoga. He has already impulse of yoga within him. These two conspire together to start him on his continued journey with the path of yoga. Therefore, he says in that new birth, Tapratam Buddhism Yogam Labate Paurvadehikam. There, by the time the child is four, five, seven, eight, whatever it be, a certain impulse comes, coming from the past birth, already working in his Sukhma Sharira, impelling him to choose the spiritual path, the yoga path. We have left it off. Now continue the journey towards spiritual perfection. Tatratam Buddhism Yogam Lavade Tauvadehikan previous body in which he had developed this yoga practice, that buddhi comes to him in a very forcible way when he starts choosing his life's career. And that buddhi will finally determine this is the career he will go through. This is what he will have taught at that time. Yatateja tato huya. He continues his spiritual practice in the new life. Effort, struggle. Yatana means struggle, effort. He continues. Samsiddhau to achieve siddhi, perfection in spiritual life. Kuru Nandana, Arjuna. This is the way that we continue to struggle for what we aspired after in one life which could not be completed in the next life, that same impulse takes you to continue that struggle. Tatratam buddhasam yogam lepatare parudehikam That is a, that buddhi that you had before begins to influence you now. Buddhi doesn't die. The body dies. Manas and buddhi, they contain all the impressions of life, all this karma that we have done, its fruits, all that is, they are there. So that buddhi begins to assert in the new life. There is no other explanation why one child should choose to become a musician from the very beginning. Another child goes to the army, another child goes to this and that. The same family, genetically there is no difference at all. So our people said, here is the truth, that man is not merely the physical body and therefore Death doesn't mean the end of human struggle. He has a subtle body. That body survives the death of the physical body. And that body 
सूक्ष्म शरीर मैन्युफैक्चर्स ए न्यू बॉडी फॉर इट सेल्फ सूटेबल टू इट्स ओन पर्पस दिस इज ए टीचिंग गिवन बाय एस आई सेड ऑल द टीचर्स ऑफ वेरियस रिलीजन्स दैट हैव देयर बर्थ इन इंडिया दाउ दिस इज ए the idea the impulsion that you have on the past but takes you sometimes in spite of your self there is language purva abhyase na te naiva kriyate yavashu api tha purva abhyasa the previous abhyasa that you had that draws you into the line of spiritual practice in spite of your self you may not particularly very much uh, take it but your inner impulse will slowly take you in that direction then in a beautiful truth krishna says here jignasara bi yogasya shabda brahma divartate shabda brahma means the vedas the do's and don'ts of a religion is what is contained in the idea of shabda brahma as vedas do this don't do this etc in quran the bible everywhere you will find that aspect of religion do's and don'ts of religion you transcend these do's and don'ts when you begin to experiment with religion till experimenting you are subject to do's and don'ts but once you start experimenting you go beyond the the do's and don'ts of any religion so he transcends shabda brahma who jnyasura bi yoga se the very investigation of yoga experiment with yoga when you begin to do you don't need the help of these do's and don'ts at all you are an experimenter that is real religion do's and don'ts is only very elementary just like child up to age 5 and 6 must go by do and not do by the parents but afterwards its own judgment comes to it it can say yes i like this i like that etc so in spiritual life it is the same very elementary state of religion you follow do's and don'ts that's what you get in smritis and in the islamic sharia in other various types of scriptures do this don't do this we follow but not meant to be but you too long you must take to experimenting with the subject of religion you don't need all these do's and don'ts at that time that is emphasized in this great line it says jnyasara bi yogasya shabda brahma divartate even the inquirer into the nature of yoga goes beyond the jurisdiction of shabda brahma or the veda or the do's and don'ts vidhi nishedha of religion thou shall do this thou shall not do this you go beyond all these things because you have become an experimenter you are in search what a beautiful idea that this is only limited application do's and don'ts when you are a child when you are grown up you can think for yourself then you are going to enter into the field of search you don't need this more once you start on a journey you consult the map after consulting the map you fold it and keep and start the journey according to the direction of the map you go and achieve it for yourself you don't constantly go on looking at the map all through your journey that is why this is secondary that is primary experience is primary consulting books is secondary consult with a view to experience that is a beautiful expression in sanatan dharma alone you will find this open admission that do's and don'ts of religions do not affect a person who started experimenting with religion when you live the spiritual life and struggle you come to the science of religion the other is ethnical aspect of religion i belong to the hindu religion so certain things i have to do i belong to the muslim religion certain things i have to do or avoid doing etc but once you enter into the practice of religion you come to the science of religion there there is a unity 
of all the religions once you begin the actual practice so take all the mystics of religions the sufi the christian mystic the hindu you will find lot of similarity lot of unity you will find there because they are not in the world of do's and don'ts there there is so much of diversity here there is unity and the truth to claim by each is also the same the sense of unity sense of infinite love and compassion these are the universal truths experienced by the world's mystics of any and every religion so that is where pure religion begins religion as a search religion as a science science depends upon seeking and quoting eddington the famous mathematician astronomer of england who says you cannot understand the spirit of true science or true religion without keeping seeking in the forefront keep seeking in front of you then you are a scientist then you are a spiritual person nobody is born a physicist nobody is born an astronomer he seeks astronomy he seeks physics therefore he becomes a scientist in religion we are born in a particular religion a particular set of do's and don'ts and remain there if you want to be a scientist you must begin to ask and seek then you will become a scientist in religion this is the one great understanding our people must have today permanent peace and harmony between religions will come when we understand these two dimensions of religion the first only the beginning but it must lead you to the second then only there will be a science of religion and then when there is a science of religion you are in search of truth you are not such a dogma or creed they have no value for you you are in search of truth is it true what is the truth of it you continue go ahead try to realize it for yourself in this way the whole of sanatan dharma is centered in this scientific understanding of religion have you realized the truth or you are merely believing believing as no particular status here tangara speaks in the commentary very often says any fool can say i know i know show what you know have you realized it let us see that kind of testing verification so many passages you will find in the literature of spirituality in india where this emphasis on anubhava experience is always there belief has no st- status in india experience has all the status belief with a view to making it experience has a status some belief by itself dogma belief and etc man may be exceptionally fine in character he may not have any beliefs at all and we respect that person it's not merely a believer believer has no particular status so krishna is giving the essence of a profound idea which is found only in sanatan dharma in every other religion if you try to experiment and try to experience something you may even be killed you must not go beyond orthodoxy that particular do's and don'ts never go beyond it how many beautiful mystics have been killed how many have been controlled by religious authorities in christianity in islam in islam there have been many beautiful mystics who have realized very high truths they had to face death even in our mughal period we had one great rather two great mystics one is aurangzeb's own brother dara shuko he was also a mystic he also wanted to be the emperor but aurangzeb was more politically clever so he could kill him and become the emperor but dara shuko was a seeker a mystic the very sense of the term then there was one karma in aurangzeb's time very lovable soul broad minded because he was practicing religion a scientist in religion how long is it been like it and so what happened he was content to get and when he was about to be killed 
he made a poem he wrote a poem i have quoted that poem in the book divine grace a very interesting poem oh lord for some time i had a serious trouble a headache troubling me all the time now the problem is solved once for all for the head itself is being taken away like that he has written a poem also just before he died so this concept of going beyond the letter of the law 